and, and so much of the work in lakes takes place in the lakes. And, and you know, you're working here in, in Indiana, uh, with some of the most southern glacial lakes in the world. And they're all on a trajectory to eutrophication, to growing algae. Um, and some faster than others. Every body of water is different. There's no two that are the same. And, and after I met with him, I'm going, wow, this is just a place to transfer our technology that we've been using in streams to turn, to turn a lake. Uh, oh, what a great experimental design is to understand the loads of phosphorus and sediment and nitrogen coming into a lake like Wallace Sea and be able to then take that data and begin a conversation with stakeholders in the watershed. And that's one of the things that I learned at Manchester with that, I called it a conservation cultural bridge. There's a great um, disconnect between folks in watersheds and their intent of how, how things should, should be used. And if you don't understand what's coming in, you can't understand what's taking place in the lake. And plus, I should say, what's leaving the lake as well. So it's a great experimental design. So <laughs> this leads to, I, I love this sign. Good luck. <laughs> right, you like that? So when you, when you study ecosystem level or, or, or landscape level ecology, it, sometimes it feels like this. I call it simply complicated. Uh, and because you go, where, where are you going to sample? What are you going to sample? How often? And, and, and you have to have good science. And I use the word wink there. And, and this is basic to all science. You, you all are scientists here. You just don't know it. But what is not known? What do we not know? And how do we scientifically approach that to have a better understanding of how nature works and how we can then sort of move in tr within the context of what we know uh, some, certain directions? Uh, we have six of these set up, and we, we started taking weekly grab samples at these six sites January 1st. Herb was out there chipping ice to get to the water. And then April through June, uh, we have devices in here that would take six samples uh, every day. Uh, we also measure how much water is flowing down the stream. We want to know stream discharge. In other words, how many gallons of water is moving past this site, and then we want to know what is the concentration of the nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment. And so then we can get a better picture every four hours apart. So in four hours, it went from this to this to this and back to this. So if you took your sample of water here, well, I'm not supposed to touch that. You get the idea here? Do I need to? Yeah, I'm afraid to get close. So it, from here to here, four hours, and look how quickly it changes. If you took your water sample here and then came back in X number of days or weeks, uh, you would have missed all of that. And then where does this go? What's the end game? You can, you can generate lots of data, uh, but if you don't put it into practice uh, and you don't use it without being a book on a shelf someplace, that's very expensive, and that's not what we do.